Okay, see the numbers down there? Yeah, I do. yeah we're on. We're okay. On. okay. Hey, guys, I'm Jim. That's Warren. You're watching Vendor Corner. This is show number 23, brought to you by Decade You Claim Vintage Depot, located in Central Florida. If you're ever in the area, come in and check us out. Um, we are both vendors here at Decade You Claim Vintage Depot, and I'm the owner. So um, why are you watching the show? What is Vendor Corner all about? It's a show for booth owners or vendors in a shop or mall like Decades Reclaim Vintage Depot. We give you perspective from being uh, vendors and a perspective from being the owner. And we talk about hot topics in our industry, hot topics in so our industry. Hopefully help you. And, make yeah, decision. help you. Yeah. yeah. So if you are a, if you're an owner or a vendor or a wannabe, or, or wannabe it's a place for you guys to come and get a little bit of insight. If you're an owner of a mall or a shop, um, maybe you can learn a few things too. So we come to you on YouTube every two weeks on Sunday at? at 8 o'clock. At 8 o'clock. All right. And last week we uh, did a little segment where we had a bag of um, topics that we would discuss. We drew a couple out of it. This week we're going to continue and uh, until we finish the bag. So we'll do two or three tonight and then probably next week finish up. Yeah. There so the first one we have is uh, how do you handle rude or pushy customers? Okay, me personally, if you push me, I push back. I mean, I'm just, I'm just that way. Um, you know, I'm used to it. I, you know, I guess I'm a little bit more tolerant um, to begin with. Uh, I worked with kids for years and years and years, and um, you know, I do have some patience, but I don't have patience uh, if you continue to do it. And a good example would be just recently a guy came in. We sell collectible comics here, and he says, he says uh, he has three books in his hand. He goes, how do you come up with the pricing on these? I said, well, I use eBay. I use eBay comps, which is um, not just the listing, but going to see what's sold, and I use those pricing. And I said, yeah, so let's look at the book or whatever. And so I grabbed the first book from him, and I looked at it, and uh, it had no comps. So it had no solds on it, but I was right in line with what everybody else was asking. I said, yeah, so I'm in, I'm in line or whatever. And he begins to tell me that the book is worth, he, he only wants to pay $2. The book's worth far less than that. And he's showing he's got some listing that he's pulled up online or whatever. And uh, we were we ha we have talked about this before. The listing that he pulls up um, may be updated, you know, once every every month. Maybe. It's a publication or whatever. Yeah. Or um, and, and what really cracks me up is when you go to that listing and it says that the, the book is only worth 50 cents. You know, he's like, it's only worth 50 cents. You know what I mean? Blah, 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 blah. I'll give you two for it. Uh, my first reaction is, why are you giving me more than it's worth? And I want to, and I often want to say because you can't buy it on that listing for for the fifty cents, right. it's what they value it at. But if you want to know the current true value, you go to somewhere like eBay, who will tell you the comparisons of sold items, what it sells sells for. So you know, so we I, I kind of push back in that manner or whatever. Um, the bottom line is it's it is what it is. Um, you have the choice whether you want to buy it or not as a customer. Um, but if it's somebody else's item, you know, um, I tell them it's not my item. You know, even if they think it's overpriced, I'm sorry, it's not my item. There's 53 of us in yeah, here, maybe yeah. even more than that. And uh, we each price ours accordingly, according to what we paid for it, um, the time we put into it, cleaning it, uh, tagging it, displaying it, you know what I mean, holding on to it. Where's your phone? It's in your pocket. Well, why Warren's finding his phone to shut the app off? Uh, we'll keep on going on with the show. So, yeah, so I tell him it's not mine. And I've, I've told one lady before, I said to him, I said to her, I said, let me, I said, if I give you a discount, it's just going to have to come out of my pocket. And she said, okay. And I said, no, ma'am, I'm not, I'm not willing to do that. Yeah, I'm not willing to pay, help you pay for your item because you feel it was overpriced or whatever. Mm -hmm. Dude, you got all sorts of bells going off there. Yeah. What was really funny is he looked behind him for the phone, and his phone was in his pockets. <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know, people are just going to be like that sometimes, and you just have to you have to work with it. Yeah. You know, but we've, we've had some true ones. And remember the one, the lady that told Lori to shut up? Uh-huh. Lori has never gotten <laughs> over that. I've, they've never identified the lady to me because as the owner, I feel I want to say something to her. But, she, yeah, she, she was trying to bring something back, had no receipt, told us. She bought it here, and we're like, ma'am, you know, Lori was trying to tell her, and she told Lori to shut up. <laughs> yeah, crazy, crazy. Some people are crazy. But, yeah, you, you got to handle rude people in your own way, um, you know, so. It's, it's part of being in business. It's, it's part of it being really in is, business. It really is, unfortunately. Yeah. 
Yeah, and and yes, the, the customer is not always not right. Always. Not always <laughs> right. But they're right most of the time, so you want to help them out as much as you can. Okay, we're moving on. So somebody's at the door, Warren. So we're going over to our next topic. And so uh, let's see what we have here. What does a vendor do with their stuff when they're, they're wanting to leave? The wanting to yeah, leave? Yeah, when they're wanting to oh, leave. I've never read that. anything, oh. but yeah. So um, I can tell you vendors that have left here, they'll put their items on sale for the other vendors. And that's happened a couple times. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll say, hey, Jim, can you tell all the vendors um, that my stuff in my booth is 50% off, 75% off? Um, yeah. And they, they can they can get a deal on it so they could resell it or whatever. Um, we've had vendors that just leave it. They say, you know, it's all yours. yeah, uh, Jim, take what you want for the shop, and then uh, everything else you can just give away. So, um, but I, I yeah, I guess this, the the first thing you should start with if you're able to is have a booth wide sale. Right. You know, uh, you're limited when you do it to the vendors because you only have the vendors smaller pool. But if you put it out to the customers. Put it out to the customers. You know, do be aggressive on it. Yeah. Seventy-five percent off. People, Get rid of people it. People like seventy-five yeah. percent off. Yeah. And then go from there. See if your shop will let you leave it behind. Um, if they'll distribute it for you. Um, you know, we had a vendor leave recently. We took some of the stuff. We were getting ready to have a yard sale. Mm -hmm. um, it was a promotional thing that we did here at the shop outside, and we just took some of that stuff and shuffled it into the yard sale. Yeah. And you know, the shop made a few bucks on it. So, yeah, I get that's be my suggestion on how to get rid of stuff. You know, family, friends, give it to them. But um, yeah, vendors are a good source. But um, offer it up to the masses first and then and kind of go from there. All right, what do you think? A couple more here? We got, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, got, yeah, we, got, oh, we yeah. got plenty of time. Well, we're, we don't really time these shows. Oh, that's uh, talking right. vintage, you're timed to eight minutes. But that's true. Yeah, uh, these shows, we go generally go a little bit longer. And I've, I haven't read all these. Oh, my gosh, this, is, this, this should be a, a show in itself. Tags. Tags. Tags are a, a big issue here at Decade Reclaim Vintage Cheapo. I don't know if it's such an issue in other shops, but well, tags. Yeah. Um, yeah. By contract, our tags have to be a set size or larger. Um, by contract, our tags have to follow a set format, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And then um, by contract, we say nothing about returning the tags. But uh, our issues arise from when the tags are, because we do return the tags. That's where our issue comes up. Because we return the tags, um, it becomes difficult um, to get the smaller ones off, the ones that are totally taped, um, things like that. Yeah. So. And you got to make them legible. Yeah, you got oh. you to you <laughs> make them legible. So, um, yeah, you're, if you're a booth owner out there, uh, please, you're writing your tag for the customer, not for yourself. Um, you know, some of us write, in uh, Greek, it looks like Greek, <laughs> you know, but uh, we can read our own handwriting. Doesn't mean everybody else can. So, hey, <laughs> see you later, Carlos. Appreciate hey, it. Have a good one, man. Yeah, you too. I'm gonna send these pictures to my buddy, so if they get, if they're interested. All right, yeah, yeah. Bye -bye. Let me know. That was Carlos, by the way, our our Spectrum guy. He's a great guy. Um, so if you guys are in <laughs> Central Florida and you have Spectrum, and Carlos shows up, he's got you covered. Really, he's got you covered. So. Um, yeah, yeah. take it easy now. So, all right, we'll move back to the tags or whatever. Um, so, yeah, you, you got to write them legibly. <laughs> you know what? He's sitting here laughing, and his are some of the hardest ones to read sometimes because he's the guy that writes in Greek, you know, and you're like, Warren, what does this say? And what really cracks me up is he has to pause to read his own writing. That's true. You know, it's like, uh, yeah, he doesn't really know. You got to keep up with your tags is another thing. Remember the other day, you had a tag that yeah. came up that had a turkey on it, yeah. a Santa on it, which is an indication that it's been through, and a green dot, when it's been through all these different events. This one particular item, the, the turkey, the, the Santa, the green dot had ripped off all the information. We couldn't read it. The only reason I knew it was his is because it fell in his genre of stuff he sells, and I could kind of see his handwriting on it, his Greek handwriting on it. So... And there you go. So um, luckily he was here. Otherwise, if we can't identify, um, we don't sell it here at Decades You Claim. If it's untagged, there you go, an untagged item. Um, we tell the customer we can't sell it because we can't price it because we don't, you know, even if you, you could identify the booth that it came in, we don't know what it was, what they want for it. 
So it winds up not being sold. And that's that's a detriment to our customer. That's not a good thing. But sometimes so, it's not our fault sometimes. Sometimes they get Florida, pulled off. Florida well, plus but, Florida but, weather. Well, yours was faded, and well, that, that's all yeah, your fault. I'm for not, there. Yeah, yeah, you got to maintain your tags as well. You got to make sure they're priced. I know that price seems to be a thing that gets left off sometimes. So, um, yeah, tags, and they're a big issue here. <laughs> yes. Big issue here because we give them back, and that's how people choose to do their inventory on the items that have sold is through these tags. But if they're, you know, for us, if they haven't met the responsibilities of following the rules on the tags, then I'm not so eager to, to support you when you come to me and go, well, I, don't, I, haven't, I didn't get these tags back on these particular items. And I said, well, you know, what was it? And you're like, well, it was a ring. And I said, well, was it that tiny little ty- type of tag? And you're like, yeah. I said, well, often we don't get those back. Um, they, they get lost in our shuffle or whatever. Um, but the bottom line is your contract will dictate how you handle tags. I know that some places they take the tag and they tape it in a book. Oh, really? Yeah, and then maybe they ring it up later on that day, or maybe you could come in and thumb through the book and see what you sold. Uh, we take our tags after we sort them and put them in an expanding file, and you as a vendor are welcome to come in anytime you want to and look in the expanding file. But you might look in the expanding file, and there's eight days of tags sitting in a bag waiting to be sorted and put in that expanding file um, because we do not have we do not have a, a system where you can see what you sold online. We do not use the barcode. Um, type of tag or anything like that. So our, you know, tags for us are a bit of an issue. But um, you know, if you're handwriting tags, make sure by all means that you're writing for uh, the customer and not yourself. Make sure they can read them. Make sure you follow your format. Make sure you follow the size on them. Uh, try to make it easy for everybody other than yourself. I know it's difficult writing tags because I write a ton of them, an absolute ton. I bet I write more tags than anybody oh, else. Oh, you in probably this place. do. Because I handle collectibles and collectibles get tagged individually. Even though there's, you know, it's 500 comics, I don't tag them. I have to tag each one of them. I have to write it 500 times. I have to put 500 tags on them, you know, and it, it becomes a lot. So, um, you know, I have to write not for me. I have to write for the customer, and I have to write for the, the counter when the people have to read them to ring them in. So there you go, tags. And your handwriting's not the best in the world. Either. No, it's Car- not. Carlos just verified that. Yeah, it's not, and that's why I had you when you brought <laughs> Carlos the little piece of paper. You read it to him. That's why I did that, <laughs> because I know it's not. All right. Um, you know, that's it. That's it for the show. We've got, uh, we did three topics yeah. here. Um, we'll see you next week. We've got plenty more in the bag, so we'll finish it up next week. I'm Jim. That's Warren. You've been watching Vendor Corner, brought to you by Decades Reclaim, located in Central Florida. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel, please. Uh, we could use the help. I don't know. We could use that. Well, we could use the help, but that would come from doctors or something. Yeah, that's yeah. true. But anyways, <laughs> if you don't mind... Um, subscribing, please do so. We we're, will see you again in two we're weeks. We're trying to get to 100. Yeah, we'll see you again in two weeks for another session of Vendor Corner. Good night now. Good night.